Hey, what up, boys? So I made an interesting observation during this month's live stream towards the end of the showcase as the team were plowing through them innocent goblins. And it made me think to myself, what type of MMO is Ashes of Creation trying to be? The questing system seems to be all over the place, or more accurately, designed specifically to cover a wide variety of playstyles. So today, let's discuss questing and ways I hope Ashes of Creation fulfills that MMORP fantasy. But before we get into that, our beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs and I would love for you to grab yourself a super cola because I feel like over the last 10 to 15 years, quests have genuinely fallen out of favor and there's only really a couple of MMOs left that still offer a genuine fun questing experience. And hopefully I can get you excited for what I hope Ashes of Creation leans towards as one of their core systems. The story arcs seem to be doing just that. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so the reason for this video was sparked during a discussion at my shameless plug over at twitch.tv where the quest in this area seems to be designed in a very deliberate way. When Steven and the team entered Oakenbane Keep during this stage of Miraleth's story arc, it had six predetermined bosses, or at least they're the ones that we saw, and five of them dropped one unique item each. These items were of particular interest as they had a handful of interesting properties to them. One, they were soul bound, so you cannot trade them. Two, they only dropped for one of the party members each time they were slain. Three, they are not marked as quest items, despite being quest related. And four, they're split into five parts that make one whole. This creates some interesting implications for the way Intrepid are designing these particular story arc areas. With the current design, the quest seems to be set up in a way that intends for a group to clear around the zone in a circular pattern, clearing out each of these bosses once for every member of your group. This, in MMORPG terms, is called a rotation and is usually used in games like BDO, Lineage 2, or Arcage. For example, if you rotate round and kill each boss four times, you will collect enough pieces for each party member, allowing you all to hand in that fully assembled toy soldier. That means this is actually a cleverly designed way to teach players unfamiliar with the grinding gameplay loop that grinding is a perfectly reasonable way to play and enjoy MMORPGs. After all, quests in WoW are just grinding random mobs presented in a way that doesn't feel like you're grinding random mobs. When they don't feel like grinding, I would call that good quest design and likely one of the reasons why World of Warcraft blew up in popularity. Is the intent in Ashes of Creation to grind our way through our daily playtime similar to games like Lineage 2 or Black Desert? Or are the systems designed in a way that offers a more linear experience similar to World of Warcraft? There could even be a third option that makes the game feel very similar to Guild Wars 2, encouraging exploration and being immersed in dynamic events that spawn due to player agency. It's all very interesting and definitely excites me when considering the long-term implications of this MMORPG's content. But let's go back to story arcs. These are the pinnacle narrative story of the area, and from what we've seen so far, they seem to be fairly shallow, more encouraging players to just go from A to B rather than completing unique and interesting objectives. For example, the one in this area is to simply go inside the zone and loot a supply crate. This could of course just be a single stage of a very long quest chain, however, when looking Looking at these story arc objectives in the past, they do seem to be just go to location and interact with NPC or object. So what makes quests interesting in an MMO and which MMO did quests the best? I don't think anyone is going to sit there with Cheeto dust in their beard and tell me that RuneScape doesn't have the best quests in the genre. Despite OSRS's primitive gameplay, no other MMO has ever been able to capture the same immersive, rewarding quests that RuneScape has to offer. Each quest is designed with a unique narrative, requiring you to use a plethora of built-in gameplay mechanics and isn't afraid to gate people behind very long-term progress. Aggression. The quests in RuneScape usually reward the players with game-changing benefits that make that previous grind oh 
so worth it. There are so many memorable quest lines in RuneScape, and for the most part, you can't even explore half the game without completing them. And that, to me, feels like a genuine sense of progression, unlike any other MMO currently on the market. Are Ashes of Creation's quest arcs planning to be something similar to this? Locking powerful benefits behind long-term progression from both the node system, artisan skills, and player skill? I believe it is, and the team have even mentioned a whisper of this during our first glimpses in the Tower of Carfin showcase. Or the quests that you do, like it's not just a matter of completing the, the laundry list of things that the NPC has you do but you pick from a whole bunch of objectives many of them optional some of them if not most of them hidden when you first undertake the quest um so you know good blaze your own trail or whatever but depending on which objectives you complete those are the things that help the server aggregate what is going to happen in later phases of the story arc and that's like across all of the players participating during that time frame what what objectives they decide to complete that's what drives what happens and what quests are available what what npcs are pulling ahead of other npcs in terms of their progress toward their goals and how you complete your quest matters yeah with some objectives you know being exclusive of one another so helping one npc will lock you out of helping a different npc the ability to wield blood magic might be seen in some storylines we'll see that is left to the players to experience and discover those types of choices might have ramifications on your character and or ramifications within storylines and uh you know whether players whether players will be able to wield blood magic is kind of up to the different storylines you all explore with that said, if this is the overall design for Ashes of Creation, then I do want to give some feedback related to these story arc locations. This is very likely feedback that they were expecting and is on the chopping board to fix, but locations like this need memorable and unique looking bosses for them to retain the interest of players returning to these locations. Right now, the bosses themselves all share the same model and mechanics as the standard elites. Boss design from both an aesthetic and mechanics point of view is one of the most crucial parts of an MMORPG, and although a minor location like this doesn't need to have months worth of work put into the design, it is still important to vary the encounters. Personally, for me, the worst thing you could do to the gameplay loop is have the players treat the bosses similarly to the mob farming itself. Zero prep, zero care, and zero threat is what killed MMORPG's open worlds, and besides, they are the leaders of the clan, so why wouldn't they be far more dangerous than their minions? Now, to conclude, I just want to go back to Ashes of Creation's story arc areas, as they seem to have some very interesting mechanics in place to further spice up this grinding gameplay loop with a variety of unique mechanics. Firstly, the open world PvP aspects create some interesting tension in areas like this, as players could choose to be hostile or work together to complete these quests. This further plays into the social elements where players could recognize you from your node and then may even want to group with you as together you will progress your node faster. After all, you're both there to grind anyway, so why not do it together? You know, like an actual MMORPG? In addition to this, the loot that drops in this area is designed in a very interesting way too. For those of you unaware, Ashes of Creation is using a unique bag system that prevents players from gathering large amounts of crafting materials at once. I noticed that the trash items that are dropping from these mobs are labelled as materials and therefore are subject to the limits of your bag space. Glint also drops regularly from these mobs and are also subject to fitting into your material bags. However, the interesting part of this whole design is that these items can be dropped on death and therefore put further tension onto the PvP elements of this open world. Do other groups of players want to risk PvPing and dropping the mats that they've acquired? Or perhaps groups would come to this area specifically to steal other players' hard work? It's a very intriguing design and one that I look forward to watching unfold as social etiquette is formed in the world of Vera. But as usual, I am just one nerd, desperate for a good MMO. And my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, if you made it to the end of the video, clearly you enjoyed it. Or maybe you're just a hate watcher and that's fine too. So come join us over at twitch.tv forward slash Narcoverse because we're high on copium.